Hey everyone, my name is Shaylee. I am 38 weeks pregnant with twins tomorrow. It's 2.15, so I figure we're safe. We're close enough to just record this today. I have makeup on. So yeah, I think tomorrow is definitely going to be a chill, relax, do nothing, don't get ready day for me. So I figured I'd better sit and record this now. My husband and I were doing errands just before this and I am pooped. Like it took it out of me. So definitely gonna be resting tomorrow. Plus we have my daughter tomorrow. She's at daycare right now, so. Hi Gracie, are you gonna come up here too? Anyways, if you're new around here, I'm so sorry if I seem low energy. Like I just said, 38 weeks pregnant with twins, that'll do it right there. Going and running errands, that'll do it right there. Plus I had just a terrible night's sleep. It's the end, I'm just feeling so tired, physically, mentally, everything. And <laughs> since it's the afternoon, it's worse. Like I usually wake up pretty slow. I, I say I feel like the Tin Man when I wake up lately, like it, it takes me a while to get my body like moving. But then I can usually like have some good energy, stable energy in the morning until like lunchtime. And then I start like going downhill from there. So we're in that window. What are you trying to do? If you're new around here again, I do videos about mostly like beauty stuff is what I started doing like 10 years ago and it's evolved into lifestyle, vlogging, home decor, I still do makeup, outfit videos, all different stuff. So give this video a thumbs up if you like pregnancy, family, mom content. Gracie, I can't with you. I like to keep it real. That's one thing I do on my channel. Like I'll leave this in here. These videos are kind of like a, a journal for me. I just like to keep them like a video journal, but I also want them to be able to help you if maybe you are pregnant with twins, if you just found out and you're freaking out and you want to know what it's like. I feel so bad, but I just had to kick my dog out. I was talking for probably like 10 minutes and I just was so like all over the place because she was snoring and breathing so loudly next to me. <sighs> let's try this again. Usually in these videos, I start with like how I've been feeling. So let's start a little bit back. If you watch my other videos, like my Monday makeup chat videos where I just put on my makeup and record it and chat with you. I had talked about how I got a new job earlier in this year in like February. So I found out I was pregnant right after that. And then it, that it was twins a month after that. So I knew it was going to be kind of hard to navigate having my new job and pregnancy because with my daughter, I was my own boss. And so I got to like schedule things around how I was feeling. I scheduled it like to stop working a month before my due date, etc. So I work in education. And so we had the month of July off, which is right around when I was what, like six months. That's when I first started feeling like, okay, I can't work out anymore. I had to stop doing Pilates. I can't go on my walks anymore. So like, that's when I really physically started feeling like this is happening earlier because this is a twin pregnancy. What am I going to do? Like it feels bad backwards to be heading back to work in August. Like that feels like when I should be trailing off because I'm due October 11th, but gonna be induced end of September if I don't give birth by 38 weeks. So I went back to work in early August and everything was fine. I only work part-time like four hours a day at this point. So it was not bad. I work in the town I live in. So it's not like a long commute. I have to drive with my belly, you know what I mean? I couldn't have asked for a better situation. And so kind of in my head, since I hadn't been there a year, the law in California is you don't get maternity leave until you have like paid maternity leave until you uh, have been there a year. Like you don't get your FMLA. I had it in my head that I was gonna work up until I had the babies. That way I could have like the most time after. There's just all these weird laws and I've never had to navigate that before. So I was just trying to avoid it and keep working. But August came, I was working and I was just feeling like it was so hard to like get out of the house and like have to be on and like talking to people and you know I couldn't wear bike shorts and a tank top even though I could dress fairly casual like I had to be somewhat presentable right like I'm at work the more of August went on I was just like oh my god like I don't know if I can do this that much longer like I feel exhausted and I just like I told you had it in my head that there was bed rest that you got written off on for disability or you worked until you had the babies like that's kind of the two options I thought there were so I had been seeing my doctor and I started seeing her every two weeks or so and so I asked her like is there anything in the middle because this just seems crazy like I don't know how much longer I can push through like this and my husband's a firefighter there was a big fire going on where we live and so I was alone with my toddler daughter most of the day days on end you know so it was just like wearing on me sorry I'm having like indigestion because I've had heartburn and indigestion this whole pregnancy I feel like I'm making this story extremely long the point is I went and talked to her and was like is there anything in between can I get written out 
before these babies come because it's different with twins. I feel different than I felt with my daughter. So long story short, she was like, absolutely. I think I was 32 weeks pregnant when she wrote me out. Gosh, was I 34? I think I was like 33 weeks pregnant when we were talking about this. And she's like, oh, I write people out at like 28 weeks for twin pregnancies. It's so important to keep those babies in there until like 35 weeks as far as their development. 36 is average for delivering twins. So she's like, I would way rather like write you out and you hold them in there and be safe and all of that. They need to develop, you know? And so we agreed that I would be written out on disability and that actually bed rest is not recommended anymore because you can get blood clots and things like that. It's more just about having that flexibility to not have to be like rushing off to work in the morning and work all day if you feel like the babies are in a weird position where you need to sit and rest because you're in pain and you know like there's days where I feel so much better I have so much more energy so I'll like get some tasks done around the house other days I feel like oh my god I can't move my like um hip flexors hurt so bad or my I'm having terrible back pain and I have that option to rest so it's really made such a difference and everyone just keeps on telling me like oh my god you're so amazing you kept these twins until 38 weeks and it's great to get the compliments but it's like I haven't done anything special you know like I think I'm just very lucky and I feel so grateful but I do feel like because I felt a, a tremendous amount of guilt because I have not been at my job a year and I just felt bad like going out on leave early when I like haven't earned that time yet and it's like you know what though like this is just like a moment in time that's never gonna happen again. I plan to go back to work and work there a long time and you know give it my all. This is never gonna come back this time. It's important to keep these babies safe. So like that's what I kept telling myself and so I really think that made the difference because I take a lot of naps. I stretch. I take a lot of baths. Like I relax a lot. I think I've said before in my previous videos the heartburn is insane. I think that that is number one what symptom I've had. Like both my pregnancies I had wild heartburn. I had to be on Pepsid. I think I started taking Pepsid like daily in July or August. Before that I could manage it with Tums <laughs> but now I don't even count how many Tums I take. I just take a Pepsid and then I pop tums throughout the day. To me, it's so uncomfortable that I can't even worry about it. Like I can't even sit there and think, how many have I had in 24 hours? Like I just take one. I try to avoid foods that would cause heartburn and I try to prop myself up a lot, but it is what it is. If I'm miserable, I'm gonna take another tum. You know what I mean? Drink some ice water, stuff like that. And more of how I'm feeling, I just feel like everything has to be slow. Like I have to walk slow. Like I said, my hip flexors hurt really bad just because you know what else has been happening is cracking and popping a lot. Like I can feel my pelvic area and like my tailbone opening up, I swear to God. I'm sorry if this is grossing you out. You know, now that I'm almost 38 weeks tomorrow, I just feel so itchy. Like my belly just feels so itchy. And it's a bummer because I made it really far without getting stretch marks like up high. I only had them down here where I had them from before. And like in the last week or so, they're getting up above my belly button. And it's such a bummer because I thought like, ooh, I made it so far. But it's starting to go out. Ooh, see, when I just stood up, it's like I have to stand up very slowly because it'll hurt right here. Anyways, um, sleep is pretty effing miserable. Like I'm just gonna keep it honest. I actually posted on um, Instagram the other day because I was up at like five in the morning taking a bath because I couldn't sleep and I posted saying, I don't know what's gonna be worse because I have had a baby before. I know what it's like. I just felt so delirious not getting sleep when you have a newborn. You're just I was breastfeeding, I had mastitis, like I, it was rough when she was a newborn. She had a tongue tie, I had, she was tiny, I had to wake her up and feed her, do her tongue tie stretches. It was miserable. So like I, I know how it feels, even though it's been a while. So I'm sure I'm gonna be reminded and be like, oh my God, this is worse than I remember. But I almost wonder if it's better once I can lay, they tell you you can only lay on your sides pregnant, right? I can't even like lay comfortably anyway. There's no way I can lay comfortably. And I don't know if it's because there's two. I'll have a, a like a pillow up under my back. I'll have one under my belly, like just two pillows up here propping me up. I'll be like huddled around a pillow. Like I will pillow puff myself up trying to be comfortable. It's so hard to describe. It almost the way I've been saying it is like when your arm falls asleep and then it starts coming back, it kind of feels like that. It feels like I'll get comfortable and I'll be able to fall asleep. But then if I like move, the blood circulates or like the weight of the babies or something and it like hurts. I'll get like shooting pains, like almost as if they're like 
squishing each other and the blood is like getting cut off or I don't know. It's the weirdest feeling and it's not like I'm screaming or something, but it's just so uncomfortable. They've moved down now because I'm getting close, but they were like up in my ribs, feet were in my ribs. I'm a person who enjoys pregnancy and I think for 38 weeks with twins, like honestly, I think I'm doing pretty well, but it's just not good. Like I, I think that the itchy skin and like the sleepless, interrupted nights I might as well have a newborn like last night I woke up because I also I'm so tired but I like kind of dread the night like if you know if you have had a newborn before you kind of like get the this dread feeling like oh my god we're going into the night this is going to be rough like at least that's how I felt a lot of the nights when I had first had my daughter I feel like that now so I'll just stay up later until I absolutely can't like keep my eyes open. I'll read or I'll be on my phone. So I think last night I was up until like 11. Then I woke up at like 1, 3, 3.30, 4 something, 5. And then I finally got up at like 6.15 this morning. So it's just like, it's so interrupted that I'm like, I almost wonder if it'd be better to have newborns and not have them in my stomach. So I could actually like lay, lay down comfortably because I know too, the instant they come out, I'm going to not have heartburn. And so I won't have to prop myself up on a million different ways. <laughs> I'll just be able to lay and like sleep for that hour instead of like be uncomfortable for that hour trying to fall asleep you know okay so we've talked about how I've been feeling sleep let's talk about like the plan because I'm supposed to be induced right okay so I don't want to offend anybody if you have been induced and you had a great experience oh first thing I want to say too is I am getting Libras but it reminded me because I also don't want to offend any Virgos out there but I'm into astrology so like making it to the 23rd of this month I was so excited like oh my gosh I'm getting Libras just because the research I've done, they are supposed to mesh really well with me. And then my daughter's a Scorpio. She is sassy. So if Libras are like more chill, that is going to be cool <laughs> to balance that out. So anyways, that was like a, a cool little exciting thing. Like, oh my gosh, it's Libra season. Like I made it to the 23rd, which I never thought was going to happen. Because when I first found out I was pregnant and it was October 11th, I was like, oh, I'm having a Libra. And then when I found out it was twins, I was like, oh, I'm going to have Virgos. Like they're going to be more self-critical and they're gonna be like oh, you know I was thinking about all the negative traits but the more research I did thinking that I was gonna have Virgos I found out and like I have several friends that are Virgos and they're amazing but anyways going back to um, induction basically my doctor told me we induce you at 38 weeks with twins it's average to deliver at 36 so 36 week appointment happened we were like celebrating the babies are pretty much fully cooked like they're full term at 37 so 36 with twins like that's amazing I was told that my dilation would start being checked at 37 weeks and so that was my appointment on Monday that I just had today's Thursday and I was three centimeters dilated which she said is pretty normal that's the one thing she did say because when we were talking about induction I don't want to offend anybody like I said because if you had a great experience with your birth being induced that's amazing I hope if I have to be induced I do too, but just all my friends personally, they were no, like no one said, oh my God, I, I was induced and it was so great. Like it kind of sounds like it's making your body do something it's not ready to do. And so it takes a long time. And so anyways, I asked her like, is there anything natural we can do? And she said, we can do a membrane sweep. So we're going to try that. I've also heard somebody say they can break your water. So I would really love to like try all of that before Pitocin. But the cool thing is she said most twin moms, there's already so much pressure down there from carrying two babies that you're already a little bit dilated. It's not like we're trying to start your dilation like maybe you would with a single baby. So I think by the time I got to the hospital with my daughter and my water had already broke, I was like dilated to a four. So it was kind of cool to hear that I was already a three on um, my appointment on Monday. Because that just means if I do need Pitocin by next Monday, that's my induction date, the 30th, that's planned right now. So if I make it through the weekend, <laughs> I'll have them Monday. So it won't need to do so much work, the medicine. I would like to try to deliver vaginally. And I would like to try that instead of just going straight for a C-section. They do allow you to choose that if you're going to have twins, at least around where I live. But I thought... I want to try to just do it natural epidural but naturally because that's what I did with my daughter and I had a good experience so she said that's great you want an epidural because like you know you want one because what we normally do is we just put like the needle in your back because in case we need to do a c-section it's already set up in there versus like if there's some type of emergency and we needed to do like get them out right now if you didn't have that all set up it might be a chance that you have to like be put to sleep because that's through your IV 
so it's much quicker which sounds terrifying like I don't want to freak anybody out but like to me I'm like oh hell no like I want to be awake when my babies come out right so I just know with my daughter I went in with the mindset of like I'm gonna see what it feels like and if I want a uh, epidural I will get one but I'm not tied to one idea or the other and so this time I just know bitch you're gonna want one <laughs> just, just like get ready and have it ready to go so that's the plan they do at my hospital have you in the or when you're laboring or maybe not laboring but like trying to deliver because again in case of an emergency you're just already in there and she warned me that there's going to be like 15 people in the room she's like it's really weird compared probably to your first pregnancy or your first birth experience because you know you were low risk then you're now high risk because you have twins so there's going to be like an anesthesiologist for each twin and for you there's gonna be multiple nurses i think there's like a backup doctor i forget what all of the people are but it's basically all just precautionary and to keep you guys safe so knowing that and having that warning ahead, I feel fine with that. It makes me feel safe, but I'm glad I knew ahead because I think if I would have just gotten like rolled in that room and didn't realize why all those people were there, I think I would have thought something was really wrong, you know? Oh, I gotta take a break. Really glad that she told me. I was just thinking randomly, I have very little swelling this time. So that's great. I was so swollen with my daughter, I could not wear my wedding ring like the last month of pregnancy. I've gained, I think, 40 pounds this pregnancy, where with her I only gained like 30. I'm right about that same size because I was a little bit smaller when I got pregnant with uh, the boys. If I haven't said, there's two boys in here. So yeah, I think that the, I mean, I know I said twins, but they're boys. And so I would just wonder if like that is why I'm less swollen or something. Cause it does feel like I have remained like smaller. Like I still feel like I gained weight. <laughs> but I definitely don't feel as puffy. Like my feet will swell sometimes by the end of the day. But other than that, I feel like way less puffy toward the end of pregnancy this time, which is so nice. Um, What else, what else, what else? So I had been going to a sonogram place called Maternal Fetal Medicine, California Maternal Fetal Medicine. It's like in the North state here in California because I am high risk because of the twins. I was seeing them once a month. So my last sonogram was like mid September. A couple weeks back and everything has looked great with baby a baby B had a kidney problem that I talked about in my last video Basically his one of his kidneys was dilated He's like had urine stuck in there and I guess it's kind of a common thing for boys It's either gonna resolve on its own or something that will have to have like a little surgery for him So that was scary and at my last sonogram they said it hadn't gotten worse, but it hadn't gotten better So it's just something we're gonna have to monitor and get him scanned after birth. So just praying that that passes on its own and we don't have to do like basically they would put a little stint in there to help him like pass his urine what else oh i think we're almost done like those were all the updates i'm just trying to remember like anything else that i'd want to put in this video to tell you if you are expecting twins hello i'm sitting on the couch <clears throat> cuddling with my dogs again since i felt bad i kicked her off the couch upstairs but I'm uh, getting ready to edit this video, so I was watching back some of the clips, and I realized I never even talked about how much the babies weigh. I just took a shower and washed off my makeup, and I feel like my eyes are watering, so sorry about that. I'm not crying. Twin A, when I went and got my last sonogram, was 6'2", I think. Twin B was 5 pounds, 12 ounces. Was that two weeks ago? Like, just the time is running together. Now that I'm not working, it's just like I'm off, so my point is... They're both gonna be over six pounds when I deliver. Like I have 12 pounds of baby in me right now, which is so crazy because Golden was born under six pounds. <sighs> Braxton Hicks, yeah. I have, I've been having those for a couple months, but I have yet to have a real contraction. And they definitely decreased once I went out on maternity leave. Like I was having a lot when I was walking around at work. Now, whenever I start having them, I just like kick it on the couch and they go away, you know? Like I had, I think two or three in the middle of the night last night, but that was it. And you know, I'm getting really close now. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. My gestational diabetes. I feel like a bad girl because with my gestational diabetes, I have not been testing my blood like I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to be monitoring it. I think I am having a Braxton Hick right now. <gasps> Uh, at least a lot of pressure down there. I'm supposed to be monitoring my blood like every single morning, fasting blood sugar, and then each time after I eat during the day. So like two other, what is that? Three other times. So four times total. And I wish I could tell you it's even like every other day. Like I will go days on end without doing any testing. And I'm just kind of like, oh shit, shh. I'm trying not to cuss. Can you tell? <laughs> 
caught myself midway there. My daughter's three almost in November and I need to stop cussing because she listens to everything and repeats it. So yeah, like I will try my best to test a couple times, like a couple days a week, the whole day. It's frustrating because my numbers are like 99% of the time good. So the idea of like poking yourself, carrying that little kit everywhere, it's just annoying when you're like, I think I got misdiagnosed. I seriously do. I think that that, that sugar they make you drink is outrageously different than my normal diet and my they wouldn't let me move around at all and my body was probably not able to process it but in my real life I never consume that much sugar and I move around more so it's like my blood sugar never spikes like that so that has been something that I would say is like if you get diagnosed obviously like depending on your numbers maintain testing but don't let it like totally make you upset because I was so upset getting diagnosed gestational diabetic I was like offended because I felt like I'm working out I'm eating healthy like what in the world I have not been eating as healthy the further along in pregnancy I just kind of give in to my cravings but um in general I just felt like I'm a healthy person what in the world and so just you know, if you get diagnosed like that, don't let it get to you. It just has to do with like how your body can process sugar during pregnancy. It's nothing you did. It's nothing that's your fault. So just don't trip on that if you get diagnosed. Just maintain your testing and make sure your numbers are good. And then if your numbers are good, maybe you can kind of not test all the time like me. I don't know. They're still both head down. We're ready to go. The other day, actually, they were like this. Like they've been like this most of the time but now baby B is like going across my belly, which is weird. And I think it's cause A is like trying to go like that to get ready to come out. That's just what I think for my little video journal. <laughs> I don't know, but it's just weird. Cause you can like feel their little spines and you know, they're moving and they're getting lower and it's just crazy when it's getting close. I did, this is gross. So I'm gonna just say it, but warning, if you get grossed out by stuff, I did think I was starting to lose my mucus plug like a month ago. And so I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna go into labor, right? And my doctor said, you know, unfortunately that's just not a very good like depiction of what's going on. Like you can't really tell from that because you can literally lose that for like a month or a couple days before you give birth. So I have kind of felt like that's been happening for a long time, but obviously they're still in there. One thing I just thought of that's different is from my, from my daughter is heart monitoring. So the last two weeks, so it started at 36, six weeks I had to go in for 20 minutes and get monitored they like hook up those little it's that thing they wrap around your belly with the monitor on it to monitor the baby when you're giving birth they did that when I was in labor with my daughter they have done that the last two weeks for 20 minutes and what they're looking for is like spikes in their heart rate I guess to make sure they're like moving and kicking and being active and stuff so that is something that's different that extra monitoring I will literally just lay there for 20 minutes I'm honestly just so happy that I have made it to make this video because I kept thinking I need to record a video like I need to record a, a last video of how I've been feeling because I'm gonna go into labor and not have this video and so that's why today I just like pushed myself to do it even though I was so tired I very much pick like a task or two a day to focus on <laughs> and so today was an extra loaded day with the errands I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it brought you some sort of answers for stuff if you are a fellow mom twi twin mom or gonna be a twin mom so i hope you have a beautiful day if you want to like hang out and see when i have the babies follow me over on instagram because i'm sure i'll be posting on there before i am back on here but thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day